this week on Socratic Cinema. Point. Like, I, I get it. I get it. Um, I'm not stupid. Wait, um, quick DMZ biker point. Is the helmet yeah. metallic so that we see ourselves in it? Mm. Ooh. 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 Deep. Ooh. Girl, don't push your don't push your good girl points. Uh, excuse me? <laughs> um, don't push your good girl points, James Delisio said at 4.58 p.m. on the 25th of July. Yeah, what is... Hey, uh, guys, Casey, James, do you, uh, see that thing up in the sky there? Uh, uh, hold on, let, let me put my glasses on. Oh, yeah, I, oh wow. I, yeah. I do. Yeah, it's... It's like a cloud, but it hasn't moved for a while. Yeah, that's that's really odd, Charlie. What 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 are, what are you going to do about that? Well, I was thinking of making a Faustian bargain and feeding it horses, but I don't know if that's a good idea or not. That might bite me in the rear at some point. I don't really know, though. Is this like stemming from some childhood like traumatic relationship you have with taming spectacles? Did like a like a like a monkey mm -hmm. attack or something? You know, yeah, I don't know. You, we can uh, yeah. we can unpack that. I think we have a little bit of time actually. Oh wait, that's awesome! Wait, right next to that cloud over there, look at that. I can see a subscribe button to Socratic Cinema, oh. and I can also see oh. that we got fifty minutes to talk about the wonderful, wonderful film that is Jordan Peele's Nope. I was looking for a place to say nope in that intro bit nope. really hard. Because you were going to ask me if I saw the cloud, Hold and on, at first wait. I was going to say nope, but that would have killed the bit. Hey, James. Uh -huh. Did you find a place to say nope in that bit? Nope. Nope. And you're welcome for that. Oh, you, hey, you, you owe me one. You owe me one. <laughs> yeah, you got me. You got me. I, th I appreciate yeah. it. But uh, all jokes aside, uh, nope is perhaps one of the most anticipated movies of this year and for the last couple years. I mean, Jordan Peele, a uh, very popular director, has made some great, great stuff. And for me, Nope was one of the deciding factors in figuring out whether or not I actually like Jordan Peele as a director or if I just thought of him as a one-hit wonder. Mm. So I think before we go into any serious discussion, let's do our, our classic overall opinions on it, starting with Casey. Yes, wow. I... Really, really enjoyed the movie. I would definitely give it probably a 9.5. This is the closest movie Ooh, that I've seen wow. um, that wasn't a 10. I, <clears throat> As I said, the performances were amazing. The way that Jordan Peele deals with tension and build was, whew, it was great. I, I love it. I love, um, I love a good unconventional horror story. I, I feel like the way that he went about the UFO and having it be not exactly what we were expecting was amazing. And I really liked the the kind of Jaws-esque, we're going to get the big, the big bad monster kind of uh, the, the build throughout the mm. story. I feel like there's a lot of layers to it, as Peel tends to do within his films. But overall, a great experience. I think it has a amazing rewatchability. It's funny at times. It's scary at times. It's heartfelt at times. It's, it's, it's a lot. It's everything that you, that you need. And I don't know. I, I think this might be... I, I, I we've seen a decent amount of movies, but I think this might be my my movie of the year. Oh wow! Whoa, big takes. Very interesting. Thank Dang, you. About, Thank you. So you really liked it, James? Are you gonna be the party pooper here? You think or I'm gonna be the heel? You, yeah, you Am I, the I feel like you might be. You really? I don't. I mean, I don't, I don't know. know. Okay. Okay. No. Um. Let's see. I mean. First things first, I want to say I really appreciate uh, how little the trailer revealed about this movie. But I do want to say I felt maybe it's not the trailer's fault, but I went in expecting to be scared. Like I went in expecting mm. some scary. And I don't think this movie is a horror movie. I don't think it was like a scary. Um, and that's not a critique. That's not a criticism. I just feel like it's something that I've seen a lot of my friends be frustrated by. They're like, I felt misled. I felt like I thought, you know, this was going to be like horror. It's like, oh, Jordan Peele does horror about race. And this movie is like not really horror. And 
arguably the main message is not about race, I would say, but we can unpack that later. So I think this movie is a very much a departure for Peel from, from Get Out and Us. And I really like that. I think this shows that Peel's got range. He can tackle a variety of feelings, right? We Get Out showed us he can make mm. a great suspenseful horror. Nope showed us that he can make a really like classic sci-fi thriller. Um, I love how classic Hollywood it felt. I, I This was like Top Gun. I would say this was a movie with a capital M where it's like, yeah, this is this is some classic movie. The score, I thought, really did a great job with that. It had a lot of very classical Hollywood, you know, orchestra swells. Um, and yeah, wonderful performances from everyone involved. I think um, it, there's a little bit of like... I would say there's I have a few couple pacing problems and I have a few problems I I think um some of the main messaging felt a little disjointed slash garbled in the third act uh but it's it's so I don't think I don't think it's perfect but I really really enjoyed nope um and I would I definitely liked it better than us um but I think overall I would probably give it like an like an 8.5 um like a very solid thumbs up, a very hearty, like I would recommend. Nope, for sure. Um, yeah, I, I, I had a really great time with it. I feel nice. m- much the same way. I think to your point about the weird messaging in the third act, the movie felt like it had this really strong undercurrent of it was trying to say something, and then it got super heavy handed in the third act with some of the decisions that the characters made, which was slightly disappointing. But overall, I mean, this movie is one of the most entertaining that I've seen in years. Truly a spectacle. I think it's really fun because it shows that Jordan Peele's greatest strength is that he's just a mega fan of the kinds of movies that he makes. Like, that's what made Get Out so good is you can tell that Jordan Peele loves horror. He loves everything about the genre, and he was trying his best to mix his own personal style with the things that he loves. And you see that again here, but for something slightly different, something a little bit more sci-fi, something a little bit more Spielberg-y, and it, Mm. it, it works to great effect. And... Probably when I was watching, the thing that made me enjoy it the most was just the amount of fresh creative ideas that it has. Like, I didn't know where the movie was going at all at any point, and I sort of loved that. I liked having to try and piece together what uh, the Gordy the Chimp scenes meant. I liked not knowing how this alien was going to evolve or like I I didn't think that it would actually be an alien. I thought it was going to be a spaceship, but turns out it's a living creature. Uh, It also has some of the most original character designs that I've seen since like H.R. Geiger. Uh, for horror movies very specifically. So, you know, hats off to whoever was the character designer on that. But just a lot of really fresh creative ideas. I think that it truly cements Jordan Peele as a director to keep watching for. He's not a one-trick wonder. Uh, I I know that uh, to many us in... I'm included in that, Matty. To to many us was relatively disappointing coming off the back of Get Out, but I think that this is a great return to form for Jordan Peele. It shows that he has all this range and all this variety, and I'm really, really excited to see where he goes next. He's, like, truly growing as a director. So go watch Nope. It is well worth your time, and I would probably give it a 9 out of 10. Okay. Cool, yes. Cool, cool. All right, all right. We're all sitting around the same – we're all sitting sort of in the same ballpark here. Um, yeah. It's it's rare that we're all uh, entirely on the same page, um, but actually the last few <laughs> episodes we've all been relatively on the same page, but it's nice, it's nice. Um, I would like to perhaps open our discussion with, uh, let's talk about, um, I guess I feel like I want to spend most of my talking points, at least in this episode, more on uh, like thematic stuff and, and more like writing stuff, because I feel like on a technical level, there's almost nothing you can really pick apart in this movie. Like the cinematography is great throughout. The performances Mm. are all great throughout. I mean, Kiki Palmer kills it. Daniel Kaluuya kills it, right? Expected, expected. Steven Young kills it, expected. Like everyone, everyone hit the, hit the mark you were expecting them to hit. Um, I felt, I I, I wish uh, Steven Young was in the movie a little bit more um, because I think he has the most, his character, I feel like has the most interesting stuff going on around him. Um, I think mm-hmm. Jupe is, is very fascinating. And I want to sort of start there. Um, specifically, um, with the the sort of I think it's gonna wind up being the iconic thing from this movie. Uh the the Gordy, the the Gordy the monkey sequence. I feel like to me, uh maybe this is like uh, bold, or I don't know if it's a hot take or not. 
I think that was far and away, uh, like those were the best parts of the movie to me. Like I, I think it's it ties into the the themes so well. Um, it's really just some great suspense. Like it's 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 you know one of those things that really has you like scared to look at the screen. Like ooh, you know, like ooh, what's gonna happen? Um, I I really want to start there and open up because I know a lot of people that I've talked to have been like, why was this in the movie? Like this had not, this is cool, but it had nothing to do with it. And I disagree. I think it served a very clear purpose. Um, and I would like to open it up to what did you guys think about Gordy, Gordy the little monkey, the little cute monkey man. He's a chimpanzee. He's just a little guy. He's, a chim- like, no. he's at the end of the day, he's, he's just, just a little guy. He's just a little guy. Yeah. You I mean, wouldn't hurt a little guy on his birthday. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, he'll hurt you, that's for sure. If, if Curious George started smashing my head in, uh, I don't know. Not to be like Joe Rogan, but chimps are scary. Oh Doesn't my god. Me, but they <laughs> this are. This is like, my favorite Joe Rogan bit. It, like, I, I dislike Joe Rogan, but this bit is actually funny. He's genuinely afraid of chimpanzees. Well, I like, would be wow. too. I mean, for good reason. Yeah, the chimps are insane. There's like stories and stories about them like, oh, like, oh, pet chimp like goes crazy and rips apart their owner. It's horrifying. It's, yeah. it's I, yeah. I, if I, I haven't been to the zoo in years, but if I go to the zoo, I'm not, like, I'm going to stand 20 feet back from the chimp exhibit. It's, it's yeah, well, listen, don't, that's not weird. Um, they're just kind little creatures, and also, I think that I could take one in a fight should it <laughs> attack me. Oh, good God. This not, is the, not, possibly not the no weapons. No, 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 no. Oh, you feel like a gun? Oh, if I have a gun, not, yeah. No, not if I have a gun. Like, give me Bro, you something. you chimp won't <laughs> with a gun? <laughs> A chimpanzee with a gun is a terrifying. Bro, a monkey concept. with a scooter is terrifying. Yeah, You've seen that video. Oh, I could, <laughs> beat, a, I could beat a monkey if I had protective armor and a gun I, and whoa, a flamethrower and a sword and a yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm saying, give me a like hard object, like a mug. You are or not a rock. winning. I'm beating it. I'm beating the, the monkey in a fight. Gordy and I are going head to head, pay per view, and I am whooping him. <laughs> this is the same. You also said you could beat a kangaroo, so I just. I, yeah. Also could beat an ostrich in a fight. I'm confident no. of all, an on all three of those counts. No, no, they have no, log legs. No. Sweep the leg. Easy the, peasy. The, the chimpanzee's just going to outmaneuver you. It's just too... It has you wiry... You nimble I am. It I'm has wiry strength. It's got like... Kind of... I, dude, listen, you're, you're, you're stepping out of your league here. Let's talk about Gordy. What yes, does it mean? Let's, let's talk about why Gordy. Is he, why is he in the movie? What's, what's his purpose? Why did the CGI chimp look so... Uh, a little bit funny. Um, <laughs> um, what do you want them to get an actual well, yeah, chip? So, but that's the thing yeah. is like, yeah, it's like it's not like they're they can't. That would have been so hypocritical. Um, to, Planet of the Apes, they've done it right before. To do a, imagine if they used oh, a real God. chimp. Oh God. Okay, Gordy, you're gonna beat the never. <laughs> you're gonna beat the yeah, bricks no. off of this. That was so. Of this mannequin. That was yeah, get so Daniel Day Lewis in there. Scary. That's some method acting that needs to be done. It was a oh frightening sequence. It was true. That was, yeah. And I love like seeing it in the beginning, having no idea what's going on and being like, what am I even looking at? And then seeing it come back later. Um, and like, yeah, it doesn't like literally connect into the larger plot. But to me, it's like a, it's, it's sort of reemphasizing the same theme. Uh, uh, I think maybe that's that's where we start is like what's the theme of the movie because there's a lot of discussion about that too I think this is a movie that's about a lot of things but what in your opinion is like the major topic of commentary because to me go first while I research I was gonna say I have my very, I have a well precipitated answer like I've I've thought about it a lot a um, well precipitated answer well I think huh. <clears throat> well we kind of have this yeah it. See, and, and, and as you Walk said, it's it. it's just like the it's just the layers. Like you have to peel back so so ah, much to kind of ah, like ah, you got to peel back. Oh, Casey, ah, take them off the show. <laughs> oh my god, clever, clever <laughs> Casey. Boom, you made the tomatoes. joke. Yeah, well, well, was it was it, it was joke until you whoa, whoa. Made the joke? Hey man, hey man, don't shoot the um, messenger. Like I feel like there's there's the. The, I don't know. I always bring back that that theme of um, like belonging or feeling like you have like purpose, and you see that in in M's character and OJ's character, and there's like this this theme of of legacy and and fame and wanting to to 
to be not necessarily be like the it person um Mm -hmm. but it's it's kind of like you you want it's kind of like the be there be square kind of mentality like i'm going to be making waves and i don't necessarily like care about who um who's necessarily like affected by yeah. those waves and when we're looking specifically at jupe's character and his relationship with gordy like that man has some issues and the way that he's like <laughs> i just ha- i just have all this memorabilia bro memorabilia of probably the worst day of your life because he's not able to uh he's gotten to this point in his life where he's not able to kind of separate the his trauma from kind of like his not necessarily like a like like this uh the chosen complex like i was Mm, like my mm. my connection with gordy uh prevented me from from dying you know he didn't come over to kill me he came over to to give me a fist bump because that's what we do like we had that that deeper level um that's why he didn't try to break like beat my jaw off of my face um unlike other people but I feel like that, as you were saying at the beginning, James, like his connection with feeling like he can he can tame things that he's chosen to to um, be the 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 like ruler of his own narrative. I, I and I think that's another like another theme that can span that can span across everyone in in the movie. I feel like OJ wants to rule. Um, the narrative of life after his father M wants to rule um, the narrative of, you know, stepping out of her father and her brother's shadows and finally being able to do what she wants to do um, and being and actually having that full autonomy of self. And even with Jupe, like he feels like he needs to be in control or that he can bargain his way through life and um have to you know lying to people <laughs> all the time taking <laughs> people's horses and smiling at them and we're like oh yeah we can get your horses back knowing damn well you cannot get those horses back <laughs> yeah. um so i guess it, w- it would just be that um like the the idea of what you can tame about yourself in your environment versus what is simply like going to like what rules you and what you can rule over Interesting. I think we're on similar tracks, but like expressing it differently. I think you're very much like that's very astute and apt. Like I, I think everything you said is, is totally correct. Um, because like I was saying, I think this is a movie you can view through a lot of different angles. I saw some people being like, "This is movie is about animal abuse," and I was like, "Hmm." Like I, I guess I see where you're coming from. Interesting. Fair, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's like it's not what yeah. I would have said, but I see your point. To me, it's about like. Most clearly, it's about, um, like, I don't know how to phrase it, sensationalization, like spectacle, like our, our desire mm. to, to, to take what is, like, uh, wild or, or tragic and try and own it and commodify it and, and, you know, film it and put it out and be like, this is mine. Like I, yeah, like you're saying, like, I'm in control of this and this is my spectacle to share with you, even though it's, it's really wild. Um, mm-hmm. like Gordy to me is, is an example of that where it's like, here is this untamable wild chimp that we're going to like, you know, what hubris does it take to take that monkey and, and put it in the show and make it wear a silly hat and be like, he's our little spectacle now. Um, and same deal. It's, you know, what our characters are trying to do the whole movie with, with the alien. It's like, we're going to get it on film. We want to be the first people to, we're going to make a sideshow out of it. We want to get videos of it and pictures of it. And I think the whole movie is a critique of that, of that. Um, and I think it does get over the top in the third act, like Charlie was saying. Like, I think the TMZ biker with the metallic helmet, that to me, it was like, you know, when the whole time he's like, ah, take a picture, let me get it on video. I uh, basically, every one of his lines was like, I'm going to take a video. That's where it was kind of funny though. It was funny, (laughs) but I did start to get a little like, yeah, like I understand that that's the, that that's the point. Like, I I get it. I get it. (laughs) Um, I'm not stupid. Wait, um, quick DMZ biker point. Is the helmet yeah. metallic so that we see ourselves in it? Mm. Oh, mm. oh, oh, oh. I think, 
I thought they were going to go, I thought they were going to do something with that helmet and how like, oh, you know, there's the whole recurring thing of like looking into the thing's eye through the reflection. Um, it starts with the horse in the very beginning, right? When he sees mm-hmm. his own eye in the reflection. And I thought they were going to do something about that with the helmet. Uh, and then I don't think they really did. Let me just say, this is an aside on the whole, on the broader film as a whole. There's a lot of stuff that I saw in the trailer that I thought was going to be very different in the movie. Like I thought the trailer gave me a very specific idea of the movie. Um, and it was just interesting seeing how like, it was a really good trailer, I think, because it didn't, it showed you lots of interesting imagery without actually saying anything. So when I saw, you know, very striking TMZ guy in the trailer, I was like, oh, this is like an, like a weird masked antagonist. Like maybe he's like on team alien or something. And then he was in the movie for like 10 minutes and he was just this weird kind of like third act distractor thing. I don't know. Um, that again, that's not a critique. It was just interesting. The biggest example of that though was y'all remember the shot of the disfigured lady in the trailer? Oh yes. I thought she was an alien. I was like, Oh, "Oh, that's it. I was like, Oh, that's an, that's what the aliens look like. That's like an undercover alien. And then, oh, oh, it, yeah, was, it's so it was so much worse. Yeah. yeah that, I'm, that was oof. horrifying. Y'all know yeah, how that, I feel about bludgeoning. <laughs> y'all know. Y'all know how I feel about I it. I do know how Casey that. feels about bludgeoning. Oh, oh, you talk a lot about bludgeoning, Casey. Yeah, it's, uh, because I'm, it's a feel like I, <laughs> I can't. And this is the worst kind of it. This, it we, yeah. this was that was truly. I hated it. I mean, he I hated came it. Back right. For more. I hated it Are how I was joking? supposed to. That was horrifying. And seeing that was horrifying. Oh, gosh, my chair creaked. But seeing her, I just yeah. Imagine John being alive missing, after that. Like mm-hmm. t- probably like arm. Like he took he took chunks out of her face. And first of all, um, Jupe. Your your followers, your little alien mask people, you can't tell me they don't look like her. You ain't crap, bro. What? That was shady. That was what? shady, and what? I didn't like it. Wait, what? Oh, you, geez. Don't don't you think the the little alien people so. kind of look mm-hmm. like her? I think those are just little gray men uh, with mm. weird furry bodies. But all I'm saying is that mm. if she had a small hard object like a mug wouldn't be looking like that oh my god could could have beat the monkey up but <laughs> you think you th- i can't yeah, yeah. i but, can't charlie <laughs> so I, i'm actually sort of a weird combination of you two uh, after my extensive research that uh and i'm totally not gonna bite off anything that i read or saw but uh to me jordan peele's movies except for maybe get out i feel like get out had a pretty clear message but nope and us I think can be read as everything and nothing at the exact same time. There's so many tiny little thematic points. There's so many little uh, alleys and nooks and crannies that you can dive into. It can be about a whole bunch of stuff or it could just be a fun summer blockbuster movie. So to me, any interpretation of the movie is pretty much valid because there's so much stuff to bite on. But the point that I came away with was similarly to James, this movie is about documentation culture. It's about how uh, people feel the need to like show uh, social media and the internet their lives all the time and how media itself in the form of cinema and TV and all this stuff uh, can both be a good thing. Sometimes it actually helps shine light on the truth of the world. Like, you know, in real life, we see people documenting police brutality using their cell phones. In the movie, we see uh, the family trying to get pictures of the alien to show the world that there is like a huge present danger while simultaneously also making a couple bucks off of it. But there's also sort of this obsession over it where at the end of the movie, there are are people, specifically the cinematographer, who puts his life uh, behind his need to capture the moment, behind his need to document. Uh, And he ends up killing himself, essentially, by trying to get, quote unquote, the perfect shot. So there's probably a little bit of commentary on cinema and and uh, visual art forms in general. But it just seems like there is this undercurrent about media and probably uh, film and TV specifically 
being something that can bring a lot of good and can be very creative and can be a spectacle that brings joy into the world, but can also lead to a lot of ruined lives and and hurt people, as we see with what happened uh, with the Gordy the Chimp incident, right? Like, people were not paying attention to uh, how they were treating others, specifically Gordy the Chimp, and it ended up, like, ending disastrously. But... Mm. That is one of many themes inside of this movie. We could talk forever about all of the the yeah, minor yeah. stuff. I, I I think that animals. I think there is a lot of validity to thinking that this movie has something to say about animals and animal abuse because it is this undercurrent that keeps going through it. I mean, you see it with the chimps, you see it with the horses. Uh, so there's definitely something there. But for me, the filmmaking is and and the commentary and documentation is the big thing to come away with. Yeah. Mm. And then I think I just, I, I, here's, here's where it starts to get a little meddled for me. Right. Cause I, I think at least for me, right. If I'm running with my interpretation and how I was seeing the movie, if, if, if it's about sort of critiquing documentation culture, right. Cause it seems to be criticizing those who try to make spectacles out of horrible things. Um, it criticizes the TMZ guy, right. He, you are meant to think, oh, he's so stupid. Um, and you're meant to go he he when he dies. Um, and same with Steven Yeun, he sort of gets his comeuppance, right? Jupe gets his, gets what's coming to him when he tries to bend the UFO to his will in a spectacle carnival sideshow, right? Like that he gets, you know, he sh- don't, don't play God, right? Like, like you tried to, to document and, and make this thing your own. Um, and look what happened. And so this whole movie is sort of critiquing to use Charlie's term, because I think it's very good, documentation culture. Um, But then, in the third act of the movie, in the finale, um, our protagonists still get their picture of the alien. Like, they still do what they set out to do from the beginning. They get their good shot. Um, And to me, it just sort of felt like, but at what, like, but, but that feels sort of inconsistent with the rest of the messaging. Like, if if they were supposed to learn that you know seeing time and again how documentation culture and the the craze to 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 photograph and document and film everything has disastrous consequences as with the cinematographer with with jupe with um uh, i forgot the name anyways right they've seen time and again the tmz guy they've seen time and again how this is a bad thing and then they it's at the very end of the movie it's like oh but i'm still going to get the picture like i still I have my cake and eat it too, you know? Um, and so it was just, it felt a little bit like sort of a weird note to end on for me. Um, I think probably thematically it would have been much richer if she was like, like, no, I, like, I'm not going to get a picture. Like, or, like I don't know. If she, if she just didn't get the thing that the whole movie has been saying is bad, you know? Uh, so that's, I don't know. And maybe I'm like being too critical, but it felt it felt a little strange to me. I Ever. think there's probably some more nuance to it. Like, I think that Peel's, I mean, obviously, I don't know. I think that Peel's opinion on it is is probably that documentation culture can be a good thing and can be a bad thing, and it sort of depends on the reasons. So the reason why the cinematographer dies is to get the perfect shot, right? He wants to be remembered as this great creative who could get the perfect shot, who put his life on the line. And in the end, it's incredibly self-serving. Uh, like mm. this doesn't really benefit anyone. They already got the great footage of the UFO. He only wants to get like better lighting on it. So this pursuit of perfection is what ends up killing him. The idea that you need to document and document and document to the point of your own body being in harm is something that's toxic and ends up killing him. But for the family getting footage of the UFO, I think is probably a more noble pursuit because they know that this creature is dangerous. They know that it would be incredibly hard to convince people that it it is real without giving them proof that it exists. So the act of documenting in that case is something that is shining light on a very uh, dangerous issue, similarly to how when people uh, photograph and take video of police brutality, it's shining light on an issue that would otherwise go unnoticed and would also probably be disregarded if you did not have said proof of it. Uh, There is like the additional wrinkle that the family does it mainly to get money at the start. So it's not like entirely noble, but I sort of see that more as making it more of a nuanced uh, goal for the family rather than it just being really cut and dry. Because I think Peel generally tends to lean more towards nuance than 
very over the top in your face uh, didacticism. Hmm. I I think I see your point, but then I guess my rebuttal is that, like, I think the fact seeing the news crew show up at the very end also is very important to me. I think, right? Because it's like, oh, who's the first people on the scene? It's not first responders. It's not. It's not anyone trying to do any good. It's it's the media, um, here to document this big alien thing that's crashing at least i assume i mean who knows what the media was going to report were they going to spin it as the alien or were they going to spin it as something else so um i don't know like i guess i guess i just feel it maybe would have been more impactful to have uh kiki palmer's character kind of see the news crew come in and sort of and sort of at least just communicate to the audience somehow that like these characters acknowledge the dark sides of, of, of media culture, right? Like just, just some sort of, some sort of through line, like, like a, I would have appreciated some sort of more conclusive statement on it rather than like, I don't know. It just sort of felt like a, a sentence left unfinished to me personally. Um, mm. Yeah. I feel like that's the goal though is that it's a sentence left unfinished is that it's so open-ended in the ways that you can interpret it. Like it, it, it seems to be very consistent tonally with the rest of his work. I, I guess specifically us and, and the rest of Nope. So it is a good move to me that you can interpret the, uh, the, the goals and the motivations behind so many of the characters' actions in several different ways. And I think that it would be unpeel-like to, it, it, at least again in his later work, because I, I do think that Get Out is fairly straightforward with, his me- uh, with its messaging, it would be unpeel-like to sort of just give you one very narrow, very focused, very uh, unnuanced take on, on whatever he's talking about. Yeah. Well, I interpret it as unsatisfying. Go ahead, go ahead, Casey. Well, <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, well, I think it's also important to to kind of look at the the ending scene as the end of M's arc because I feel like M, the M that we see at the beginning of the movie, as soon as she would have seen the news crew, she would have grabbed that photo and walked right up to them. But the M that we get at the end of the movie, she's looking, essentially she's looking for her brother. She's looking for the family that she's kind of been ignoring and, and pushing uh, kind of the, to the side for, uh, for I guess, her, not necessarily her, her own personal gain, but it is kind of her own personal yeah, gain. Yeah, no, I think that's, that's Like, that's she'll, she'll go, yeah, like, she'll go... Um, even on the commercial, you know, she'll she'll step in because OJ's shy. He's not necessarily like the bombastic, uh, charismatic person that she is. Um, <clears throat> but she'll also do all this self promo and and all this stuff that OJ doesn't necessarily think is necessary. Um, <laughs> get it? Doesn't necessarily. Anyways, um, <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> Uh, I just I just accidentally said necessary twice in a row. It's fine. Um, okay. But I, I don't know. I just find that I feel like that's also something that we we have to pay attention to that it, it, within that the feelings of, well, what is the family? Are the Haywards doing it as as a noble as a noble cause? I think that where we see M particularly at the end of the movie um and i'll i'll talk about oj and at the end of the movie in a minute but where we see her it kind of shows like yeah that is they're a lot more noble than the other people that we've seen in 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 the movie because they didn't jump like she didn't jump at that opportunity of exploitation when she obviously had like she had everything that they worked all movie for um but instead she wanted to focus on looking for her brother and being being hopeful now that's that a take would be there that's a that's take a i take. can agree with that now you now you're starting to get me a little bit so i guess my yeah like that that okay okay yeah no i i can come to peace with that i guess i just feel like i don't know it's a very rapid change for her to try so hard to get the picture and then in the next scene be like i don't care about it anymore so for me, it's like, well, just, I don't know, maybe just not have her get the picture at all. But it's, that's, that's, that's neither here nor there at this point. I think you're right. I think, I think you, 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 you make a good argument 
you you <laughs> you got me. Um, yes. Does, does Casey get a, a gold take? Do I get a gold a, take star? You do. You get a good take star. Yay. Um, Yay. But I think that's a, a good segue into looking at uh, Daniel Kaluuya, who I thought was it was a very good performance. He plays Daniel Kaluuya plays like he's interesting. I feel like he can play sort of anybody. He can play very loud, charismatic leaders like um, uh, why am I forgetting his name? Fred uh, Fred Go Hampton. On. <laughs> yeah, you thought I was going to slip up. You thought I was going to expose myself <laughs> in front of our audience of five. I would never. Um, <laughs> however, so we can we've seen him play these very loud, charismatic leaders, but and then here, you know, he's playing very reserved, very sort of man of few words very kept inside uh, role. And so I thought he does great at both. I think it's easy to accuse. I've seen some people on, on Twitter.com being like, uh, like Daniel Kaluuya wasn't that good in this movie. Like his character was boring. And I'm like, that's, that's, he's supposed to be like, he is just a shyer person. Like that's just how yeah. some people are. That's a um, really bad take from those people. Yeah. yeah you want to know who said it? You, you want to know who said it? actually. No. Logan Paul. <laughs> Are you serious? Logan Paul You're has joking. a th there's a thread he has on Twitter where he's like, "Here's everything wrong with Nope," and a lot of it is just like, "I didn't get it." Okay, um, if if you take any of Logan Paul's movie opinions seriously, <laughs> I really pity you as a person. <laughs> um, but but I thought Daniel Kaluuya was was wonderful, and I think he has really great Karst Karsten Runquist. Uh, said, I just watched his note video a little bit before we started. Uh, he's just got great, like, leading man role vibes. Like, he's just a great, great, like, That's lead what actor. I've been saying. He's a good, he's, he, you know what? <laughs> I never disagreed with you. Um, <laughs> he's, yeah, he was wonderful in this. And I loved seeing him get to have his, you know, again, some friends of mine were like, oh, I feel like in the third act, it drops all the horror and stuff and just turns into kind of a straightforward action like set piece. I'm fine with that. I don't care. Who are your friends? These takes are awful. I, they're they're just, they're, they're very... This is what happens when James doesn't talk to us about the movie after he sees it. I know. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I was saving it for the content. But I mean, I, I don't know. I guess they were just, just expecting it to be. They were expecting it to be more horror. I don't know. But anyways. Okay, but here's the thing with with... <sighs> If you ever do this, because <laughs> I've, I've done this before. Or, well, this is Jesus important, like, no. I feel like. Go on, Charlie, go. If people do this, you cannot judge a movie based on what you expected what you, it to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. You, ha you mm -hmm. have to judge it based on what it is. So you can call out Nope for being tonally inconsistent if you want, which I don't think it is at all, by the way. But you could call it out for being totally inconsistent if you thought that the first part was slower and more deliberate and and felt more like a horror movie and the second part was was much faster paced and didn't match well. But you can't just say movie bad because action in the end. Like watch a thriller for once in your life. Like they all end in huge action sequences and are scary. So I don't know. Just just judge the movie for what it is, not what you wanted it to be. Yeah, I wasn't. I'm not agreeing with that. I'm just presenting. I'm presenting yeah, things I, I, that I've heard and responding to them. I, I'm not going after you. I'm going after like if you ever make that kind of take, which I have done in the past before. We are all susceptible to it, like specifically yeah. with Star Wars. I think Star Wars should be certain things, but I always got to remember judge it based on what it is, not what I want it to be. That's me with Spider Man. I do that a lot too. Um, <laughs> I stand I'm perfect by it, in every way. Yeah, Casey just has never had any any problematic takes ever whatsoever. Nope, um, ever. No, not even problematic, just bad. Um, <laughs> well, Turning Red was, that was a oh, crazy hush. episode. But I just want to say, <laughs> as I was saying, oh, you know, um, I've been on set all day for my new hit show, so I'm tired. I'm sorry. Um, but what I was going to say is there's just, there's no universe. Like there's no universe where I'm going to see Daniel Kaluuya riding a horse with amazing string section score behind him, like flagging down a giant alien and be like, that's lame. That's cool in every timeline. Like, I don't care yeah. where you are or what universe you're in. That's like, that's just good. That's just movie. That's movie for me. Um, and so I really like that. And then here's the last, listen, here's the last thing that someone sa said that annoyed me. Someone was like, 
And then the alien transformed at the end because, like, oh, I guess they needed a big third act spectacle. And at that point, I'm just like, my brother, did you watch the movie? Like, <laughs> the fries guy covered himself in barbed wire, got sucked up, ripped up the alien from the inside, which is why it unfolded because it's literally ripped apart. Like, that to me was like, that's just a, like a ABC sequence of events. Um, Even if it did unfold, it's an alien. What, what are you talking about? Yeah. It can do whatever it wants. I did see someone really great take by some random Twitter.com user that um, uh, it looks like, you know, they were like referencing the Bible quote at the very beginning of the movie, and then they were looking at the alien's final form, and it looks a lot like a biblically accurate angel. Um, yeah. Like in, infinite wings. And, and, oh, yeah. I forgot about the Bible quote. Jesus. Uh, yeah. Oh. I, was, I was like, dang, that is a really great take. I love the, I love the alien design. I love how it looks like it's made out of this weird, like fleshy fabric. Yeah. Um, oh, it looks like sheets pulled taut. Oh, it's such a. I, I like that we design. started the movie inside the alien, but we didn't yes, get the. That was very that cool. Yeah. Later. Um, also, the title cards, I think, are worth talking about because I actually sort of agree with I, – I agree with what? What am I saying? I think I'm a sucker for title cards in a movie. Like, I love them. I love them. However, in this case, I did feel like sometimes they weren't – like, sometimes they felt totally warranted. Like, yes, absolutely, this is a different section. This deserves a title card. But sometimes title cards popped up, and I was just like – this is separating what from what? Like, uh, it just sort of felt, I don't know, kind of like it just Fair. disconnected the movie more than it needed to. On the whole, I think they were fine. Um, they weren't the best title cards I've seen, but they also were not, like, bad. I just felt like sometimes, if you're going to do title cards, they need to really, like, add something. They need to really be, like, a, an important part of the movie, which all my favorite title card examples are like, you know, um, Pulp Fiction and, and, and all that stuff. Um, but this was just, or, or like the last duel, you guys remember the last duel? My favorite uh, yeah. examples, one movie and the others, you know, <laughs> and the last, I said, two. I, I, said, I, know, I know, I know, I know. Tarantino yeah. does that a lot too. You are so mean to me. I, it was a joke. It was, you're so it was mean a to mean me. shape. You're so mean. I don't know what I'm going to do about it. But I don't know. I just feel like in sometimes the title card, like we didn't move anywhere. Like when when the the specific one I'm thinking of is when uh, OJ is like hiding from the alien in Jupe's big carnival thing, and then it like flies over him and it cuts to a title card, and then the next shot is just back in the it's just back exactly where we were last seen, and I'm like, why did we? Why, why did, did we, we cut away? Yeah, why <laughs> did we separate? What is, this isn't a new chapter. Like, the action isn't over. Um, but I digress. Over, overall, I'd rather, I'd rather see, and this is sort of my thesis with, with Nope in general, is I'm just glad to see a director be able to be a little weird and creative and have it be a big blockbuster hit and have the budget for that. So, like... If all of it doesn't land, that's okay, because I'm on the side of directors tr making art and trying weird stuff, even if it doesn't always work. Like, I'd rather them take risks. And mm, I think Peele yeah. took risks in this. So if it doesn't all work, I'm okay with that, because I'm just glad to see him do it. Yeah, yep. I agree. Yeah, and, and we've seen this kind of creative risk-taking with uh, something like Everywhere... Everything everywhere, uh, that goddamn movie. E -E -A -O -O -E -A -O. It, um, it's got so many words in it. You know, it's incredible. Everyone uh, and, has asked us to do an episode on it. I know. And, and and hey, viewers, guess who tried to get us to do an episode on it? Guess which one of us was the person pushing for it? Viewers. Me. <laughs> Me. <laughs> Hold what? on now. Girl, don't push your don't push your good girl <laughs> points. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> Um, Don't push your good girl points, <laughs> James Delisio said at James 4 58 p.m. on the 25th of July. Yeah, what a strange thing to say. On random Monday. What a strange thing to say. What a really odd thing to say. Um, <laughs> I never saw it. I never saw the movie. You, I know. Wait, you just haven't seen it? I thought you saw it at some point. Uh-uh. What are, what? Wow. I know. Crazy because I haven't Jeez. seen it either. Oh Shut up. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, okay guys, Casey. Guys, we this is a film podcast. Mm, L plus We're you haven't to seen know Sunny Boy. modern films. L plus you haven't seen Sunny Boy. That's a degenerate uh, anime. 
L plus oh. you haven't seen Sunny Boy. Um, okay, in my defense, as the most emotional person on the podcast, I knew it was going to ruin me for at least a minimum of five, five to six business days. So <laughs> I was There's just no trying excuses. to give myself some time. <laughs> There's is no it excuses. On, is it on any of- streaming platforms? I- it might be, but no excuses, Casey. My friend <laughs> or my friend went with uh she is half Asian. She went to uh, I, I won't reveal the specifics. Uh she went to a uh movie with uh I think three of her Asian friends on Valentine's Day or something, and they were high and they watched everywhere every that one. And wow. they got through it. They cried through it. So you could do it too. I okay. believe in you, Casey. Okay. This is a movie for everyone. There's no excuses. Everyone should watch it. Do it now. Stop the podcast. Cue who's going Hey, who 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 going to be piling into the into Disney Plus to check out Agatha Coven of Chaos? The Stop. most you keep- the most anticipated <laughs> TV show of the year. I can't wait for Agatha Coven of Chaos and uh Echo and Armor Wars. And he's Secret just, Invasion, just, and the other the other Disney Plus shows that I think that I think a robot made up, like I think just they rolled him. dice and threw darts at a board and were like, "That's stop the show. Him. There's the show. There it is. That's the new show." Or Captain America: New World Order, which I feel like is a name that needs to be censored. Like I feel guys, weird saying it. This um, Marvel hater is really hating on Marvel. Right. Right now. Wait, guys, guys, did you hear? They announced a new Marvel movie. They're doing another one. Can you believe it? I, yeah. I like. I know it's hard to believe, but Marvel's doing another I'm, movie. I'm excited. <laughs> Get I can't. They better be producing the next Jordan Peele movie. I'm so excited for Nope Part Two, but Iron Man's there. <laughs> My favorite that I saw was someone photoshopped one that was Mank Two, <laughs> and had like the MC. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, not Mank. I refuse to watch Mank. No, I, I saw Nick. one. My friend posted one. Oh my gosh, it had me dying. It was like, it was. He got like the Avengers font and everything, and it was like. Avengers Muppets versus like <laughs> it, was, it was hilarious. Can you I believe can't. it? Can you believe they're doing two in one year? Uh, see, like the point that we've gone <sighs> to a time in the culture where we could ask, isn't it crazy that Marvel, one of the biggest film franchises ever, with the backing of Disney, which has a bajillion dollars, can make two movies in the same no, franchise no, 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 in one year. Two That's Avengers wild. movies? I know. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's the it's Avengers movies thing. are supposed to be like the big events, though. I don't know. I guess we're getting two would... big events. Yeah, girl. Like, I'm they, not, they want as many no, big events. Did you just girl no, me? There's no hype for either <laughs> one. Girl did you? He, he just said your good girl voice, God. That he today no, you literally. are today you are gendered. All right. <laughs> I'm shackling you with the chains of gender today. Um, (laughs) James is on a get canceled speed run. (laughs) No, but I just, I don't know. I feel like there's, there's already two Avengers movies in one year and I feel like nothing hype has happened like to build up to either of them. I don't know. Is that weird? And also here's what I'm interested in. Who is even in a, like who counts as an Avenger anymore? Like who is the, who is the lineup? You know? OJ from Nope. Are they? Yeah, yeah. You ride horses really well. Hope so. I hope so. Um, but are, is it just gonna from now on? Is every Avengers movie just gonna have everyone in them, or are they gonna like say these five people are the Avengers now? Because I really don't know. You know, I don't know either. I don't. Wait, I, Casey. <laughs> Casey, do you know? Well, I mean, obviously, oh, but I'm I was, not gonna I, tell I you. I thought you were gonna say. I thought you were gonna. I was really hoping you would go. Nope. Wow, you uh, want me to dance for you, James? You yeah, want me to dance? Okay. You want me to? I was trying, to, I was wow. trying to give you a good time to shine. I was trying to. Oh, okay. I'm just messing with you, James. Hey, I'm no, just, James. I, 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 love I kid. I kid. Okay, wait, guys. I got one big question about no. Nope. Yes. Is OJ alive at the end? Yes. yes. Let's talk about it. Wait, what? No. Yes. Totally no. not alive. Absolutely the, dead. Yeah. Wait. There's. What? Okay, Charlie, do you want to explain or do you want hold me on, to Hold on, hold on, hold no, on. Let me tell you, you what I think. Can I share why? Uh, no, James, shut can up. Can I share why I think he's alive? <laughs> because we saw him. I didn't. Okay, first of all. You think that is, means anything? Wait, is this a debate? Is this a real debate that's happening? Yes. yes. Yeah. It's going oh. back and forth on whether or not OJ is actually alive. Because really? when I watched them. Oh, wow. 
No, when I watched, yeah, when I movie, watched the movie, he was there clear as day. No, but I'm just saying, I just genuinely, I didn't even, that wasn't even a question. I was just like, oh yeah, he's, yeah, there he is. And I was really happy. If he's dead, I'm sad. I don't want to be sad. I like it. Well, I like well it Casey, ex- explain why James should be sad. You yeah, should why? be sad. Okay, so dead? first off, it's not only the positioning of where OJ is, but it's also M's reaction to OJ, right? At least in the in the content that I've been seeing. So M is very is, is looking at OJ very hopefully, but she's not making any uh any move to go towards him, right? Like if that's her ride, then I'd be <laughs> grabbing that thing and getting on that horse and going. But he's very just kind of still and looking at her from where from out yonder. Mm. Mm. Okay, out yonder, maybe, but her and, not walking towards him. And add on, add on. Mm, okay. And okay. we also see earlier in the movie that ghosts of people, quote unquote, like the dad, can seamlessly go into the real world uh, without any special effects or anything and can look like they are actually still alive. So, when does the dad do that? The dad, uh, I believe that OJ is like saddle or he, he's like fixing a saddle. It's like halfway through the movie. And he hears his dad talking right outside the barn and he sees his dad uh, like doing something I forget. But it, it is a shot. It is a I scene. Thought, oh, I thought that was just a flashback. No, this is this is canonically after I'm fairly sure. But how does anyone says who, though, as my like question? <laughs> I don't know. Jesus, um, like, who's your sources? Yeah, source. No, hey, that's no sources. Sources. Kill me before I ask someone for a source. Um <laughs> <laughs> but I believe in the power of myth and folklore. Um, but <laughs> the power of what? I was just going to say, I don't know. I, f- I thought it was just like a very sort of tender, understated reunion. Like, I, I don't know if, if I. I maybe it's just me because I'm a weirdo, but like I love a reunion that's shot like that, where they just like look at each other for a long time. Must and, love the notebook. Mm, huh? I oh, love yeah. staring at people. I love it when they <laughs> reunionize and they just look weird, longingly. Just a, just a weird thing to make fun of at that point. Just a weird thing to jump <laughs> after. Um, <laughs> just kind of strange of you. Um, yeah, maybe that's saying more about me than it is you. Yeah, yeah. It's like you're getting desperate. I can't look at um, someone. <laughs> eye contact. Charlie, Charlie uh, just doesn't look uh, at people in the eye. No, when I Charlie's, say goodbye, I stare at my teeth. Okay, bye now, bye. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> yikes. Um, no, but okay, interesting. I see the, I will have to research this because I see the claim, right? I see what you're saying. I just choose to disagree. Um, for my, <laughs> okay. My, pe- okay. <laughs> my peace I'm and so my- I'm so angry. <laughs> my peace and happiness says that he's alive. Um, I just, I'm shocked I haven't heard this discussion yet. Like, I didn't even realize this was the thing that was being debated. Oh, it's because the people that you watched the movie were with, I didn't get, why is it not a funny movie? Like, why I don't no. go ha ha? I think they had the opposite problem. But I, I, I went ha ha. <laughs> I went ha ha. I thought it was funny. Um, but interesting. I'm going to have to read up uh, Nope Ending Explained after this because I can't form my own thoughts. Um, <laughs> does, does anyone have anything else to say? Nope. Ah, there it is. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I'm glad you, <laughs> glad you did that one. Um... Or you know, speak speak nope, or forever hold your peace. Um, that oh, was no, forced. that yeah, yeah. It's okay. I'm sorry. It's okay. We can I try would, again. I had to go for it, right? Like I said, I'd yeah, I, I, you, I'd you rather someone 100? try, yeah, <laughs> try and fail than never try at all. But no, I think, but nope, I think that's all there is there's to say about nope. I mean, there's a probably like hours more, but it would take people smarter than us to to get into it. Um, Are you saying we're stupid, James? No, I'm, 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 we refers to me and the little voices in my head that tell me what to say on the show. Um, <laughs> we're just the, voices in his the head. The little funny guys in my brain that tell me to do stuff. Um, yeah, we're not real. This is just James doing a voice right now. Well, no, yeah, apparently, because apparently people who are very like physical and appear in the frame are actually dead. So you and Casey <laughs> could just be a Ben Ghost this whole time. And this I guy has know. never seen Sixth Sense. It just has Shut not happened. Up. Shut up. Up. That's Jeez, such a lame, lame. <laughs> did we do a Sixth Sense episode? I don't even remember. Yes. We did? Yes. <laughs> crazy, crazy, crazy. During our Halloween, when we actually like themed. Yeah, when we celebrated Halloween. holidays. Hey, hey, 
to all the viewers out there, we are going to watch Over the Garden Wall and do an episode about it for fall. I promise you. I promise you. I need it to happen. Okay. But the themed episodes <laughs> okay. are coming back. All right. Let's do it. Let's go. Sure. That would be fun, I think. Um, yeah, we'll do it. But until then, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you like the episode. Thank you for listening. Um, this has been Socratic Cinema. Socratic Cinema talks nope. Um, thank you for listening. I hope you really enjoyed. Um, you can find more episodes of our podcast anywhere you listen to fine podcastery, like Spotify, Apple Podcast, YouTube, uh, Anchor, probably more platforms. Um, you can also find us on YouTube where we post our podcasts and also video essays and other fun uh, analytical content. So check that out for, for more of that. Um, you can find us on our social media. So you stay up to date with all our fun, zany activities uh, on Twitter at Cinema Socratic and Instagram at Socratic underscore cinema. And finally, if you want to support the podcast monetarily, uh, you may have noticed your ears were kept free of sponsors this whole episode. If you want to keep Socratic Cinema sponsor free, I'm framing it like it's a choice. If you want to keep Socratic Cinema Aww. sponsor free, become a patron at patreon.com slash Socratic Cinema for as little as a dollar a month. That's all it takes. Keep us off the streets. Uh, and we'd really appreciate it. Um, until next time, Adi Nope. Adi Nope. Adi Nope. <laughs> Adi nope. <laughs> <laughs>